the best upside of social media is being able to go in someone's DMs. You you gotta get you gotta slide into the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like with social media, like it's good to have a bunch of friends, but if you don't really know them, are they really your friends? A life without social media is like a life you can dedicate to something else. I currently don't use any social media, so whenever I'm with like my friends. They've got so like into social media where I barely even talk to them when I'm with them. So like without social media, it is sometimes really kind of, you, you know, you feel left out. I'm glad I don't have anything because like when I get older and I apply for a job, they're going to like check all that. And like, you know, me being young and stupid, you post stuff that you don't think about in the future. I, I think that um, pe I've heard a lot of people say that there's less drama if you don't have social media and I think that the only reason for that is that people are scared to confront people when they're actually there in front of you. It's much easier when it's over the phone because they can't really do anything. What age did your parents have to talk to you about when you're dealing with the cops? Well, my parents gave me to talk like right after the Trayvon Martin case, like when that when they started talking about how he was just walking around with his hoodie on. It was, yeah, I was around the Trayvon Martin case and my parents were like, you're, eventually you're gonna be old enough to drive. I know my mom, she gave me the talk, uh, like, I think when I was 12. Well, my parents did give me the talk, this is actually my grandma on my dad's side. If it applies to me, then it should apply to everybody else in the same exact manner. Dude. Don't try to manipulate the law on me just because I look a certain type of way. Well, my parents had to talk with me when I was 16 years old. And I guess the frustrating thing for me is that somewhere in my mind, I kind of thought and maybe believed I would not have to have that conversation with my son. But I have to at a much earlier age because he's exposed to a lot more a way earlier than I was at that age. We didn't have Facebook or social media and stuff like that then. News wasn't around the clock like it is now where you can just turn on and you see things happening at any point in time. So now he's asking these questions and I have to be honest with him and tell him even though I want to protect him, I have to be honest with him and protect him in that manner about having that conversation with him. My best friend, um, her, his sister wears like hijabs and stuff like that. When, we're, when we went out one time to the mall, it was kind of like we were getting like a whole bunch of stares because I guess people, you know, they're like Islamophobic and they get all scared because they think that, oh, as soon as you walk into like a building, you're just gonna like blow everybody up. My experience trying to get people to believe something different from what they believe, I think people are just gonna think and believe what they're gonna believe because most people, like, especially if it's teenagers, they were raised to believe that. So it's their parents' fault that they grew up to be like that. It's, it's very hard to change someone's mind when they've been raised to, like, be, like, discriminatory against people. When I was younger, I've done things. I've said, like, Islamophobic things. I've said sexist things. And now I realize that that was not okay at all because I, I have changed my mind. So it's, it happens slowly. So, like, yeah because the system is created to favor certain people. So when you go into that area, there's a difference between hate and resentment. Now, just because you have resentment, you don't have to act upon it. But there's a difference between, okay, I hate this person because they are this color, and I hate this person because they have the power to do something to me and get away with it. I grew up with sharecropping. My, my mother had 16 children, eight girls and eight boys. I wasn't able to go to school like I should because we had to stay behind. And that cotton that you see, I, you know, we actually lived through that, living like that with no lights. We didn't have any electric lights. We had to make uh, fire in the stove to cook our food and stuff, you know. Had to go down by the riverside, they call it, you know, to get, take water and bring it, bring it in. I didn't go with very much to school. I didn't get the education that I needed because we had to stay behind and work the farm. Instead of saying this isn't, you know, having anything to do with me, use that power of privilege that you do have, whether that's being straight or being white or being rich, you know, whatever that is, you can do that and help other people, so. But you have the ability to make this a better world. You have the right to vote, pen to paper. It's your key. Use it. If you see somebody in trouble, Help them. As old as we are, if we see you in trouble, we're going to come to your aid. 
If you see us in, in trouble, don't stand there and look and whip out your cell phone. Save a life. The people on, on the planet Earth need to come together and move forward to new ideals and get rid of the old stereotype ideas that they have. Because if you listen to some, they always say, the good old days. The good old days for who? The best is yet to come. You are our future. And I should say, say I'm loud, say I'm clear for the whole round world.